Hello. Uh, in this uh, Linux lab, I wish to demonstrate about this uh, lab number 15 of this uh, Linux command line, which is a part of uh, AWS uh, start restart program. So, okay, let me quickly go ahead and uh, explaining about the lab part. So, click this lab and uh, then you can see this uh, open this command line in a different tab. So, once you click, you can see this work lab starts. And as long as this is red or orange, please wait. So, once it turns green, uh, you should see your command prompt. And if you want to change the language, yes, you can change the language. Yes, this is your, you can see uh, the dollar prompt which is there. So let me just explain. Linux is an operating system which work, which has multi-user, multi-terminal and multi-processing uh, operating system. See, this dollar prompt is nothing but your bash shell. Okay. So this uh, bash shell, this is, we are operating in CLI. And this is our lab, Linux command lab. So once you see this green, you can start working on the lab. So in this lab, I made a small notes actually. So these are the uh, commands which I want to just discuss in this lab. So we will start the following commands one by one. Additionally, also we'll be still learning some more commands. So sequentially, let us learn one by one. We will start with uh, the questions basically which has been given. So the very idea is that run familiarity commands to gain knowledge to your current system and current session. So, this uh, learning commands can be operated in any flavors of Linux, especially whether it is a Red Hat Linux or Ubuntu or even SUSE or any other flavors. Okay, so the estimated time of completion is 30 minutes. So, let us go straight into exercise 1. So, first command which we need to learn from this is who am I? Who am I will display the user ID. Who am I? So please remember Unix works, Linux works in only lowercase, no uppercase. If you by, by chance typing anything in uppercase like this, it won't work, it won't work or in any mixed case. So here when I say who am I, who am I, it will display my username. So the same thing is displayed. This actually user ID, username at the rate of host name. The same thing is displayed. It returned back with labs user. This is the first one. Yes. Then next is uh, it displays your user ID. Next one is your host name. We will also see about host name hyphen s. Host name hyphen s means that the short ID. If you, if you are having a long dot dot the centos dot uh, something like uh, test dot example dot com, it will show this the shortest one. So if you want to know more details, what is this hyphen s? You can say man post name, man post name. It will show you the options, especially if you want to see hyphen s, scroll down and see this hyphen s is nothing but short. Display the short post name. And how you can quit? Q for quit. Just Q for quit, it will come back. How to clear the screen? C L E A R, clear the screen. Right. So the next command, the fourth one, is uptime. Uptime will display uh, from when the server is up. I mean, this system is up. Okay, I can say uptime hyphen p. Hyphen p. So it will display uh, this is up by 6 hours 34 minutes. I mean, the server is running since last 6 hours and 34 minutes. That will display okay uh, the uptime. And now coming to the fifth one, which is called as word count word count wc stands for word count and again i tell you this symbol which is there this is called as a tilde which is a representation of your home directory see here my home directory is i can display what is my home, what is my current directory my current directory is pwd just you can say p present working directory you can see this home slash user and whenever you see this tilde it is an indication that you are in your home directory and my home directory is slash home labs user. So I want to see a word count for a file called as dot bash tree in my home directory. So how do I do that? WC, WC for word count. Tilde slash dot BSH 
okay underscore history if you want you have shortcuts also use tab h tab if the file is there it will display if the otherwise to use two tabs no it's not there let me say history h i s t o r y if it is not displaying if it is mentioning as no such file or directory you can type exit and then again give like this okay exit because it is not yet recorded into the history file so i'll say exit this connection closed and again now let me issue the same command so it is not the system has not stopped it is only the shell has exited and again came back okay so this is what is uh, what we call as when we say exit command now let me give again wc tilde slash dot da as it and i can say underscore history h and a tab h and a tab it will display it is a it is called as an autofill so when you say that it will report back saying that wc means word count the first figure which you have is 10 lines it has 10 lines with 14 words and 91 characters if you want you can see the file contents how do you see cat cat dot okay you give the same syntax tilde slash dot bash underscore history you see this one exactly 10 lines 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 lines 14 words so 10 lines plus 1 2 3 4 14 lines 14 words are there total total okay and 91 characters in this way you can understand about word count now let us go ahead with the sixth one that is who hyphen h who hyphen h who means who are all the active users logged into this particular server just you know one is there other than me who hyphen h and hyphen a a for all you see this in details lot of all all means all more details will be shown more details will be shown nothing is there so here name line time idle time pad but if there are more users, multi-users which have logged in, so this is a console user. If there are any network users or any other users, it will display. The next one, I want to show you the time zone. See, time zone command will help you. See here, if you want, you can give Asia Kolkata also. Asia Kolkata. Also. The syntax for syntax for using you can use this Asia Kolkata and the date. You can set the time zone first. You can set the time zone first like this. So here I say paste like this tz equal to asia slash kolkata space date. So now what will happen? It is displaying the date in IST format. IST format. Otherwise, if you say date, it will show in UTC. Okay, if you set the time zone to Asia Kolkata and date, then it will display in what we call as IST, that is the current time, current time which is being shown across. Okay, I hope you understood. So now next is the calendar. I'm clearing the screen. Calendar will just display this current month. <coughs> you see this one? Now calendar, if I say 2022, it will display the entire year's calendar. You see this in the whole from 1st January to December. If you want to have a specific calendar, yes, you can ask. You can ask. Like this is one specific calendar. It will display August 1947. Or if you want, maybe calendar 9 of maybe, or I can say, uh, uh, I can say, I can say like this, September 1752, which has fewer days, please remember. So like this, if I want calendar in hyphen J, I'll show you calendar, hyphen J, it will display the current month of the year in number of this is today is the 75th day like that you can understand 75th day still more if you want to see the calendar starting from sunday you can say calendar hyphen s it will show from sunday no i want calendar from monday i can show from calendar from monday like this see this one like this it starts from monday here hyphen s for sunday okay that is how this calendar command can be used now coming to the 10th one 10th one I'm clearing the screen. So here I'll tell you this is ID. ID. ID is the identification. Like for every 
username there is an id like we have an employee id or ro role number etc right same thing here for every user when we log in we have an id just press id if you want to know your user id so my user id is 1107167 this is my lab user id and we have group id and other ids also but this is okay this user id right so this is the report of the user id this completes my exercise 1 Okay, now I shall demonstrate this exercise too. So here we will understand about this bash history, and of course there are many functions which we need to learn. So the first one, see now the terminal is already open. Now type history. History. History means it displays all the commands which you have earlier typed. Press this history. You see there are huge commands which we have given, right? All these commands. Now if you want to say cat. history so actually this history is stored in this particular file or directory in this in this location in this location let us see let us see same thing cat see here cat okay that is my home directory dot bsh underscore history yes it has shown here and if you want to see sometimes it will not show this commands generally you can exit and then come back uh, to uh, see the complete history anyway there are some commands which are there i'll show you here if you say exit okay all the commands which you have written will be stored here now i will just say uh, cat dot uh, i mean tilde with bash history it will show more commands because all the commands has been added to this one so here this is how you can yes now the next one is i will uh, discuss about this uh, uh, if you want to repeat the previous command you need not type just say two with the, i mean exclamation sir it will print the previous command as it is again i will show you hash right so if you want to know the history just type history i'll show you something interesting now history So here, if you want to execute fifty-first command, I tell you this one. You know that this command you want to execute. I can say exclamation add fifty-one followed by fifty-one. So it will execute the fifty-first command. See this one exclamation with the command number. If I want to execute one more time, I'll I'll, I'll show you. If I want to execute maybe uh, a command called as thirty-nine, thirty-nine. So I'll just say exclamation. With the thirty-nine, so it will execute the uh, I mean word count the same command as it is. So that is about this exclamation and a double exclamation is for repeating the previous command. History we spoke about this. So these are some of the commands which we have learned from this lab. But still more, I wanted to add some more commands for your knowledge. So here I will just explain about first about what is the standard in, standard out, and standard error. this is very important uh, in additional to do this exercise standard input is equal to uh, anything like your keyboard whatever the input which you are giving is called as a standard input and standard output is nothing but your uh, this is uh, the input device is your keyboard okay so standard output is your terminal terminal the standard format we call as trm and errors also once you execute or a program or a file or anything it is uh, redirected to terminal and the errors also are shown here in the terminal so now please understand output equal to standard output standard output plus standard error i mean that i mean that when there are no errors your output is equal to standard when there are errors see errors and errors and the standard out will be displayed on the terminal so if you redirect the standard errors to a device called as null then you can see standard output the relational the output which is there okay more details about the standard output will be discussed in a later class and also i'll explain about a command called as echo echo so here i show this first echo and then also i'll show you how to create the other commands like touch and other things which are there so here so i'm clearing my screen echo i say hello hello
at all. Word. When I say like this, it prints exactly the same what is there in the quotes. Please remember to keep in quotes. So if I say echo at to some simple without anything, it will print a blank line. It will it will print a blank line. Echo will only response back what you have uh, given as a part of the input. Now, I'll speak about a command called as ls. ls is nothing but list of files. List of files. There are two. It can be files or directories also. If I say ls hyphen l, this is called as list of files in long form. L hyphen l for long form. You can see here when any character when this is called as the list of this is equivalent to directory in MS DOS. Okay, MSC prompt command prompt. So this is your directory. How do I know this is a directory? The first character, if anything is coming as D, it is called as a directory. Please understand. The first character, if it is coming as D, it is called as a directory. Here in this case, both of them are directory. So now let us create a file. How do I create a file? I can do this using this touch command. Touch my first file. My first file. You can create any file name. So I have created a file. The same command I want to execute. ls l. You can use up arrow also to see the commands repeat. Now I have created a file name called as my first file. You see this one? This is shown as hyphen. Hyphen means it is a file. What is the size of the file? Zero bytes. Zero bytes. And this is the time and date which has been created. And this is the user owner. I mean the user who has created this file. So this is how you need to understand. Later on we will understand about this file permissions at a later time. But understand you can create multiple files like this. If I want to create more files, I can say T O U touch my second file. My second file. So I can say ls hyphen l space. The space should be there, must and should. So you can see this, there are two zero bytes file. Now I want to add data to this file, the first file. Okay, I want to add data to this first file. How do I do that? Cat greater than my first file. Greater than, greater than means redirecting. Redirecting the data to the file. Greater than, yes. You see a test file, something I want to add. Okay, I can add some data. Okay. And say and say control C to come out to again back to the problem. Control plus C. So now it is the file, the data is added into your file. How do I how do I see? Ls hyphen L. You see this now? This contains this contains 50 bytes. 50 bytes in this file. The data has been added. If you want to see the contents of the file, what you do? Cat my first file. My first file. The cat and the file name. You see this one? The file data is now added. You can see the view, the contents. See if you say cat can be used in multiple ways. The cat file name will show the contents of the file. Cat greater than file name will add the contents to the file. Okay. If I want to add more lines, how will I do? If I do use cat greater than, what happens? It will overwrite. So, in order to append, we have another symbol which is called as cat greater than, double greater than. My first file. The file name should be same. My first file. So, here I add more contents. So, I have added the contents. I can say control C. Now, you see the file. ls hyphen L. You see now earlier it was 50, now more contents has been added, which is called a 76 files. You see this? Cat my first file. Your contents are appended. I hope you all understood about uh, this uh, cat, cat greater than, cat file name, of course, cat double greater than, and cat file name. These are the three essential things which you need to understand. Okay, this is about the Linux command line, some of the commands which you need to practice. Thank you and bye.